On August 31, 2023, the Finnish government released a rather confusing document advocating the banning of communist symbols. The completely outlandish document is called a government statement to parliament on promoting equality, gender equality and non-discrimination in Finnish society. What does a document with such a title have to do with communism? The situation is perfectly clear to class-conscious Marxists, but takes some explaining. Analyzing this situation will perfectly demonstrate how the ruling capitalist class and their government act dishonestly to fool the people and to selfishly serve their own interests. In the media, the document has been colloquially called the government's statement on racism. This is because on the surface, racism is its main topic. Since its formation in June 2023, the current government, consisting of the right-wing coalition party, the nationalist Finns party and the Christian Democrats, has faced serious criticism for the racist views of many of its leading ministers. The government has also launched huge cuts to social welfare and the livelihood of the poor and working people. The government's Minister of Economic Affairs, Wilhelm Junnila, member of the Nationalist Party, was forced to resign after only 11 days due to intense criticism for his racist statements. Apparently Nazi dog-whistling, advocating the giving of government funds to a heritage society of Finnish SS volunteers, etc. Nationalist Party ministers Mari Rantanen, Minister of Interior, Lena Meri, Minister of Justice, Ville Tavio, Minister of Foreign Trade, and Riikka Purra, Minister of Finance, Vice Prime Minister, and Head of the Nationalist Party, also faced severe criticism and a clear attempt by the Liberal opposition to have them ousted. The ministers in question have repeatedly supported the so-called white genocide or great replacement theory, both on social media and in the parliament. Vice Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Burra was also forced to apologize for old statements on the internet where she apparently advocated racist violence. Those comments were made on the website of the previous leader of the Nationalist Party, Jussi Hallaho, currently Speaker of the Parliament in Finland. Due to this criticism, the government felt it necessary to issue a statement denying their racism. Of course, the releasing of such a document does absolutely nothing to demonstrate that the government ministers are not actually racists. They have a long history of racist views, and more importantly, a long history of racist policies. The first purpose of the document is to lie to the Finnish people. Another purpose is to launch, or rather to continue, the anti-communist propaganda campaign waged by the Finnish capitalist state. The government document states the following, quote, Acts motivated by hate against Jews, Muslims, Christians and other religious groups will be prevented. Holocaust denial will be criminalized. International Holocaust Remembrance Day will be observed in accordance with international practices. The possibility of criminalizing the use of at least Nazi and communist symbols to promote ideology will be investigated." Unquote. The mentioning of communist symbols is completely anachronistic and out of place. What does communism have to do with racism? Absolutely nothing. The document disgracefully attempts to link and equate communism with fascism. That is actually an old fascist tactic. The fascists first try to equate communism and anti-fascism with fascism, saying that they are both equally bad. And then, they try to argue that actually communism is worse, and that fascism protects us from communism, and is therefore good. There is a Finnish court ruling from 2021, which allows the use of swastika flags by Nazi demonstrations. It is unlikely that the current pro-fascist government would actually outlaw the swastika. But, the fascists have so many different symbols, and routinely rebrand themselves, so that it actually wouldn't even matter. The swastika is only the most blatant fascist symbol. Despite the fact that Finland signed the Paris Peace Treaty of 1947, which required that all fascist-type organizations be banned, the Finnish state nowadays not only allows Nazi and fascist symbols, but also allowed the registration of a neo-Nazi party in 2022. The name of the party, the Blue Black Party, is a reference to the original Finnish Nazi party from the 1930s and 1940s, and the notorious fascist Lapua movement. The Nationalist Party itself has many ties to small fringe fascist groups. Due to these developments, it is unlikely that the government of the big bourgeoisie and nationalists would take any serious action against racism. It is completely unrealistic. The three government parties all share a nationalist, conservative and religious outlook, although the coalition party is the most moderate. 
In religious issues, both the nationalists and Christian Democrats have advocated far-right positions, while on nationality and ethnic issues, the nationalists are clearly the most extreme. All three parties serve the big capitalists, but the Christian Democrat Party is much smaller than the other two, and the coalition party is the most closely linked with the richest and most powerful capitalists. It is a stereotypical party of millionaires and of the wealthy. The biggest seeming ideological disagreement within the government is on immigration issues. The coalition party is strongly pro-EU, in favor of international free trade and labor-based migration. The nationalists have always opposed immigration in rhetoric, but in reality they also accepted the use of immigrant labor and never seriously opposed it. Instead, they merely use racist demagogy and try to turn Finnish workers and broad masses against immigrant workers. Therefore, the seeming ideological disagreement is actually not real. The coalition party supports immigration in order to exploit immigrant labor. The nationalists also tolerate immigration, but attack the immigrants, thus leaving them even more vulnerable to exploitation by the capitalists. All the government parties strongly favor militarism and NATO. Despite the nationalist party's supposed anti-EU attitude, they have fully accepted the EU's position on communism. The official position of the EU and of the European left is to equate communism and fascism. The EU celebrates the so-called European Day of Remembrance for victims of Stalinism and Nazism. It would not be a big surprise if this Remembrance Day were to be brought to Finland soon. There we see the dishonesty of the nationalists. They pretend to oppose the EU, but are actually in a united front with the EU against communism. This united front has also been joined by the social fascists of the European left. They are social fascists because they pretend to be leftists, but actually ally with the fascists against the communists and against the working class. The Social Democratic Left Alliance Party of Finland is another prime example of such social fascism. They participated in the previous Marin government's anti-communist and anti-worker policies. One of their parliament members, Anna Kontula, who even calls herself the only communist in the parliament, reacted to the government proposal to ban communist symbols by saying that no symbols should be banned, not even Nazi symbols. Typical social fascism. Defending fascism by disgracefully linking it with communism and pretending to defend communism. She continued by saying that communism is not the same as fascism, only Stalinism is the same as fascism. This treacherous left Noske cleverly and disgustingly pretends to defend communism, but actually attacks it. She attacks all real communists as Stalinists, calling for them to be equated with fascism, and in reality, supporting the government's proposal to outlaw them. Revealing their true class nature, the EU, the pro-EU capitalist parties, as well as the nationalists and the social traders both in Finland and internationally, are all in a united front against communism. So what was the government's purpose in releasing their document? It was to lie and pretend to oppose fascism. They also wanted to intensify their anti-communist campaign. Communism has nothing in common with racism, but this government of racists suggests that anti-communist persecution should somehow help in combating racism. What an absurd situation. They say, in fairness, if we ban Nazi symbols, we must also ban communist symbols and the social fascists join in this dishonest game and answer, therefore fascist symbols should be protected. The government and the police, while hiding their fascist sympathy, say, communism is just as bad as fascism, and the social fascists work seamlessly with the government and the police and reply, yes, real communists, the Stalinists, truly are terrible. Is the government proposal going to be implemented? The government document has been accepted by the parliament. However, the document does not clearly say that communist symbols will be banned. It says that the government will investigate the possibility of banning the symbols. Communist symbols have already been outlawed in the Baltic states, Poland, Ukraine and Hungary. Therefore, it should not be seen as unrealistic. Whether the symbols are banned or not, this is another dangerous step towards an even more reactionary and anti-worker policy by the Finnish state. I say state and not government because this policy has been continued by all the governments, both right-wing and supposedly leftist. The toppling of Lenin statues and Finland's NATO membership happened already under the social democratic government of Rinne and Marin. This proposal by the government pretends to be anti-fascist, 
While its advocates have clear fascist sympathies, it is actually a step towards fascism. Fascism means the open dictatorship of the most reactionary sections of the imperialist capitalist class. It means the abolition of bourgeois democracy and its replacement with open violence and terror. It means that workers and progressive forces no longer have even the nominal rights offered by bourgeois democracy. In fascism, worker, democratic, progressive and communist organizations are banned. The banning of communist symbols is the first step towards outlawing communism, and thus a step towards fascism. It is characteristic that it is being done under the guise of opposing fascism. The government is being criticized for its fascist sympathies, and it responds with covert fascist policies, which even succeed in fooling some people. Genuine communists in Finland have responded to this government proposal by correctly declaring it a reactionary anti-communist and pro-fascist measure. Communists, such as the Communist Workers' Party and Red Action, have held a demonstration in Helsinki against the government's proposal, boldly waving hammer and sickle flags, which the government wishes to outlaw. At other demonstrations, communists have also carried banners opposing the government proposal. It is also characteristic that some bourgeois liberals and revisionists have already taken actions to distance themselves from real communists by trying to suppress the use of communist symbols at their political events and demonstrations, despite the fact that the government hasn't even outlawed them yet. Whether or not the government is able to outlaw communist symbols, it will not stamp out communism or the workers' movement in Finland. The attempt to change the topic of criticism from fascism to communism and to ban communist symbols only demonstrates that the capitalist system is in a deep crisis. The capitalist system, in order to survive, needs to intensify its attack against the livelihood of the working masses, and to intensify the attack against the most determined fighters against capitalism and imperialism, the communists.